My name is Terry Canning and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Catalyze. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about our product. I'll tell, give you a little background about the problem we're solving, the company itself. Uh, I'll give you uh, um, some results of uh, the validation study, which which concluded the Catalyze outperforms humans in detecting nameless lesions in dairy cows. Um, and then I'll talk about some of the practical uh, configurations of the system, how we actually rule it out. So first of all, I'm just going to share my screen here and uh, play from start. A little bit of history about myself. First of all, I, I grew up on a dairy farm, studied engineering, and I worked for nine years in the mid 90s in various cloud computing companies, including Canada's own Nortel Networks. Uh, I also worked in Silicon Valley and in 2004, I applied my knowledge of cloud computing to the livestock industry and founded Farm Wizard, which was the world's first software as a service for managing livestock. I grew that up over the next 10 years until we were managing 4 million cattle, and I sold it in 2015 to the Wheat Chief Group, and I exited in 2019. The problem that, that a lot of us face uh, in these companies is how we get better data from farmers about their livestock, and you need that to be able to drive efficiencies, which is becoming ever more important as we drive towards net zero, to improve genetics, and very importantly, to monitor and improve animal welfare. Now, currently, most recording of livestock information is carried out by humans, so humans typing information into computer systems or even writing them down, which are effectively inaccurate. And those sensor solutions have really helped. There are lots of really good wearable solutions. They tend to rely on human commissioning, and they tend not to scale on, on very large dairies. So this is where we introduced Catalyze. And Catalyze is a video analytics platform which takes footage from low-cost 2D security cameras and uh, that are placed up in a dairy barn. We pull that footage up into the cloud where we run various neural networks. And it's these neural networks that we've spent the last two years developing that segment out the cow, identify her, and then look for specific insights. Uh, the first insight that we're going to be delivering is that of lameness detection. Um, out of the value proposition at a farm level is, first of all, early lameness detection can save $100 per cow per year. In turn, and that's from reducing lameness levels on a dairy herd, uh, and that has the added benefit of taking out half a ton of carbon per cow per year out of the supply chain. Other insights we're going to be developing is body condition scores, estrus, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and, and uh, really developing out the the value that we're bringing to the farmers. Now, some of the farms that have been using the system, we've we've really started bringing on farms properly since about March of this year after we had the successful validation study by the University of Liverpool. And some of the farms are, are reporting really great results, such as Air 4 Farm in Anglesey, which saw a reduction in names from 25 to 13%. And that was verified by academics working with the farm uh, from the University of Liverpool. Other type of stats that we're finding is that we're, we're seeing the ability to detect lameness earlier than humans are able to do it. And this is some of the data that we've, we've we've mined from some of the farms we're working with in the US. And it shows that uh, the lameness level of the cattle reports, which is a score between zero and 100, the higher the score, the more lame the cow is. And typically about 50 is the, is the break point for a cow to go lame, is that you'll see early detection. So you'll see or the scores start to go up before the humans actually detect and treat the animals in all of these cases even as much as maybe a couple of weeks in advance. And it's that early detection, which is really, really important and where we can really create a lot of value. Now, the team we have behind the system, I've talked a little, little bit about myself, first of all, and my experience in the ag tech sector. Um, I co-founded the business with Adam Askew, and Adam had spent 12 years working in the cancerous tumor detection industry, working with um, a company that used video footage and, and use video footage from pathology slides and use the footage to be able to detect cancer in humans. So we're very lucky to, that Adam um, had so much experience in this area. So him and I got together in 2019. We founded the company. We raised about a million US dollars and, and that enabled us to bring his entire team across. And it's his team that had all the experience working with the technology. So we just set them to the task of of um, being able to uh, calculate or, or monitor lameness levels in dairy cows. Um, Nilo Boyle uh, joined us last year and his experience is very much from a veterinary world and specifically around large dairies. Um, on our advisory boards, we have Tim Dendulk, 
leading US dairy farmer and also Nick Cobb, a leading UK dairy farmer. Uh, and then on our board, we have Professor Neil Robertson, who's one of the leading researchers in human facial recognition and machine vision and, and machine learning in general. And also Tim, Tim Taylor, who's a US dairy visionary and he's former Valley Ag software CEO. And most recently, we've recruited Pablo Lombardo to help drive sales uh, at a worldwide level. He was originally from Zoetis and ran their precision livestock services in, in, that, in, in the US. So we recently took First of all, experts from outside ag into ag, and then when we got the system validated, then we brought in more ag talent to help to help us roll the system out. Our key milestones. So I set up the business way back in January two thousand nineteen, and that was just putting cameras on a a small dairy herd, my my brother's dairy herd in in Ireland, and um, we did that allowed us to build out um, just a proof of concept detector video. Um, I went full time in April 2019. We got into NVIDIA and AWS accelerators, which came with quite a lot of cloud computing credits. We got a little bit of grant funding together. And then in July, we got Tesco quite excited by what we were doing. Tesco were interested from a perspective of a, being able to use our technology to monitor their, their dairy supply chain, uh, which was very exciting. Um, and they helped introduce us to other companies and other people in the industry that could help. Uh, developed the system out. Uh, Adam came full time in October, and then we raised 750k seed funding, which allowed us to to um, to build out the team and, and to start working on the application. We really spent 2020 building the data sets uh, and building the algorithms for for that segmentation mobility scoring uh, algorithm. And we 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 have all our our mobility scoring algorithm patent is filed both the European and uh, PCT world level. Um, and we opened uh, another round of funding tail end of 2020. And then at the same time in parallel, we commenced our two month validation study. So really 2021 has been a very exciting year for us. We um, completed our validation study in February and the University of Liverpool and um, they confirmed that they could uh, that we outperformed a human being in in lesion detection, which is very exciting for us. Um, we then started bringing on dairies in uh, in the UK. So we were working with Tesco and M and S uh, in the UK, also was in Pro and some other companies uh, to roll it out. Um, we had by about August we had fifteen farms live in the system. We're uh, up to now about twenty. Um, and in the US, we brought on our first US dairy in July, and that's working with the US Council of Dairy Cattle Breeding. They are using our technology to build out phenotypes that they can then use to look for genomic traits that may point to hoof health susceptibility. And that's a really exciting project. And there's some webinars, if you Google, uh, you can find out some more information. And very important, especially in the US market, is to integrate with the um, the uh, software system, so Valley Ag software integration has been completed. It was completed back in August and we integrate with their Pulse platform. And we're also looking to integrate with Bodysync, that works on the way, and we should be completed uh, for complete that by about the end of November, uh, along with PC Dart as well, uh, which is very important. So just to give you a little bit of a, a demo of the system in action, you're going to see six cows walk past these videos um, the, these video cameras. Now the bottom left one is the cat light camera, which is the overhead camera, but the side one above that is just really to uh, to, to to help uh, help with the presentation, so we can give gives you an, a, another view of the animal. But it's only the overhead one that's actually required for cat light. So you'll see six cows walk past. Um, you'll see first of all the human scores. Uh, the scores they were using the ROM system, so zero, one, two, three. So zero is a completely non-lame cow. Three is a very lame cow, and one and two are ones is getting lame. Two is lame, and three is very lame. So, and then you'll see the catalyzed score, and the catalyzed score is a number between zero and one hundred, where anything above fifty is considered lame. So we'll see these first set of cows walk past the camera. You'll see this first one we flagged her up as lame, and one of the scores did, and the other score missed it. Um, and you'll see the next one is marginal, and the third one is completely non lame, so it's fine. Now you'll see the fourth one coming on. 
a second. And you can see that girl's got a, a sore foot. See it being much sore, and that's a higher score at 63. So you would definitely flag that car up. And then the next ones are totally fine. So that's just a, a subset of, of from a particular farm. So the University of Liverpool validation study, which is very important to us, concluded in, in, in the start of this year. So that was across three farms, 1,400 cows, two experts. And uh, the cattle and the scores were blinded to each other, so neither could be influenced by what the other was seeing. And the idea is we wanted to benchmark see how we could compare the farms, were we accurately comparing them in terms of their lameness levels, and how we compared also to the humans. Um, so those were the three farms, some wider area indoors, some wider single lane exits, um, uh, indoor and outdoor, different sizes of farm, et cetera, to give us a good spread. And the results were really fantastic. Um, area under the curve for mobility scoring was 0.832. There was 89% agreement between the Universal Liverpool score and cattle line. You can see the different scoring levels there. And the key, uh, the key takeaways from it is that we compared, we basically we compared in, uh, to a mobility, an expert mobility score, and that was somebody with two years experience above the veterinary on mobility scoring. But when it came to actually checking lesions, we tended to outperform the human, which we were very excited about. So the app itself, to, to be able to access the information, uh, the farmers have an app and really they can log in and they can see an overall view of the lameness levels in the farm and how it's um, how those lameness levels are either improving or degrading over time. And they can click through and see actual videos of animals. Uh, and it's those videos are very important because the farmers can then actually see themselves um see for themselves how the car is walking it helps them get confidence especially at the start when using the system although we we, we do see as integration being more important to us than um than actually having our own app the various configurations that we support um some of the best ones involve the rotary parlor so we have two cameras a step on camera that the car walks past and we pull the ids off the the parlor computer and we then associate that to the animal. And then we find the animal later on as she leaves the parlor uh, under our analysis camera. So we've got a lot of really clever IP that can match uh, the cow that we've learned about in the first camera with the cow in the second camera uh, to give us very high levels of, of accuracy for identifying the animals. And then we feed that back into the dairy comp system. Other configurations we have, sometimes if there's a rapid exit um, or a herringbone parlor, some cases what we'll do is we just put in a panel reader uh, and in that case the we're getting the id is actually just coming from the panel reader we we are currently integrated with data mars panel readers and uh we then attach the um the rfid that we see to the uh to the to the video footage the car that we're scoring and then we can feed that back into the um on uh, back to the back to the the parlor system or computer system that the farm is using or else and uh, they can use the app. Um, so that's pretty much the end of the presentation. I do want to stress that we are moving into other protein types. Beef, I would suggest, will probably be next, um, where we would attempt to predict when the right time is to harvest a, a beef animal. Uh, we'd also look to look at what we're monitoring welfare levels in swine. Uh, we're looking at poultry and sheep. So thank you very much for um, uh, tuning into the presentation.